This review has been made possible by Toyota of Naperville. As you know, Toyota has tons of brand new Toyotas available for purchase, but did you know that they also have a remarkable selection of used cars? Head on over to toyotaofnaperville.com and look through hundreds of used cars for sale right now. All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2018 GMC Sierra. Up front is a 5.3 liter V8 and down below is an 8 speed automatic transmission. This video is sponsored by CarMarshall.com. If you'd like to support the channel, click the link down in the description below. CarMarshall.com advertises for over 100,000 vehicles across the US. But let's get back to that 5.3 liter. Now, I have driven a lot of vehicles with this similar engine setup. It's been updated over the years, but if you remember last week, I drove a 2010 Chevy Tahoe, had a 5.3 liter V8. Very, very similar engines here. Like I said, of course, it has been updated, but we're really dealing with the same engine here. That being said, I like the engine a lot. It's been put into so many fleet vehicles, regular vehicles, it, I mean, and it's been around for so long that the, the research is there and it's definitely a reliable engine. I think that's the biggest takeaway with these engines is they don't make the most power in the world. They're not, you know, the crazy naturally aspirated engine that you'll find in a Mustang GT350, but they're solid. They make good power and they're reliable. That really just has to be said. And if something does break, you can pretty much find a rebuild kit any corner mom and pop shop. They probably sell them at Walgreens or Jewel Osco. And so when looking at a truck, you know, something you're going to tow a lot with, something you're really gonna put a lot of elbow grease into, it's nice knowing that there is a lot of aftermarket support and there is a lot of support just for the motor in general. And so I really, really like that. I don't think there's a sport mode or anything. Um, I'm not gonna put the windows down, but we are fully up to temperature. The truck, almost called it a car, truck is broken in. Um, 5.3, oh. okay, man, it really wants to squeal the tires. It really wants to squeal the tires. It, this motor's great. It, the motor is absolutely great. You're never gonna have an issue with power with it. Unless you like try to pull down the Sears tower, then maybe, but other than that, you're gonna be fine. Like I said, paired to it is an eight speed automatic transmission. Now this hasn't been around for nearly as long. Most previous generations had a six speed, which is fine. And an eight speed is nice. You know, it, it keeps the revs low, gets better gas mileage, blah, 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 the whole lot. And last but not least, of course, the Sierra is four wheel drive and we can select that on a dial which we'll talk about in a little bit when we talk about the interior so let's talk about the interior well in front of me i have a bunch of gauges i'm going to talk about it in a little bit that this is sort of a a weird middle ground of truck but on the left i have my tachometer going to 6,000 rpm it's not going to shift up there it's going to shift at four <laughs> then i have my battery voltage my coolant temperature my fuel my oil pressure, and on the right, I have my speedometer. And then in the middle, I have the typical classic GM information center. So right now it's telling me my current speed and the speed limit for the road that I'm on, but I can turn it to a blank screen. I can actually turn it to my four wheel drive settings. So it'll actually not only tell me where the power is being sent, but it'll also tell me what degree my wheels are turned. Cause sometimes you do a full rotation of the wheel if you're stuck in mud or something, you think the wheels are straight and they're not, this will tell you. And then actually the pitch and yaw, I believe that's how you say it, of the truck. So how much it's tilting this way and how much it's tilting that way. That is really, really nice, especially if you plan on off-roading. You can't really go by feel when you're out in the mud. You, you, can't, you don't really feel much in the wheel, so you have to rely on systems like this. And it's really nice that this truck has those systems. But moving on with those center screens, I have transmission fluid temperature, fuel economy for the last 50 miles, tire pressure, oil life remaining, fuel range, my odometer, my other odometer, so you can do odometer B, and then we're back to my speed. I love this, and this feels very Cadillac. I've seen this sort of information center in a lot of Cadillacs, and so that's where this is gonna start feeling like a middle ground, because really this is an up-spec Silverado, but it has Cadillac features, which is sort of interesting. Getting on to which the steering wheel feels very Cadillac. On the left is my cruise control options, heated steering wheel options, and collision avoidance options. And then on the right, I have my voice commands, phone options, and then my controls for the center screen. 
To the left of me, I do have my trailer brakes, so this is where I can adjust the sensitivity for my trailer brakes, which is very, very handy. Pretty much all modern trucks have this, but it's still nice to have. Then I have my four-wheel drive high, auto, two-wheel drive high, and four-wheel drive low. So this is what was lacking in the 2010 Chevy Tahoe I just drove, is that there was no four-wheel drive low. This has the nitty-gritty four-wheel drive low. If you're real stuck in the mud, if you're out in the country, out in the bayou, toss it into four low, you will not have an issue in this truck. Then, of course, I have my headlights, dome lights, fog lights, switches right there. On the door, I do have two different memory seat options, which is really, really nice, especially in a truck. You know, trucks are usually the last to sort of get the new features. I don't think there's any trucks with self-driving quite yet, and some of them are just getting Apple CarPlay, and heated seats are kind of new things for trucks, so they're usually the last to get features. However, they have two different memory seats, which I love, and then the GM thing of having the get out button. So you hit this, the seat moves all the way back, and lowers so it makes getting in and out a lot easier. Then on the door I have all my power mirror options, lock and unlock, child locks, the whole biz down there. Now in the center I do get a center display screen. This is a really common Chevy center display. I mean nothing really too crazy. And I say Chevy, GM, Cadillac, if you're not unaware they're all owned by GM so they share a lot of parts obviously to save money and so Chevy, GM, Cadillac. Wow, that might be all that they own now. They used to own Saturn, Oldsmobile, Hummer, Pontiac, but those are all gone. Wow, they really thin the herd. They all share parts. And so when I say it's a Chevy center screen, it's a GM center screen that can also be found in a lot of Chevys. I've driven a lot of Chevys recently, and so I'm very used to seeing them in that sort of area. With that being said, it's not bad. I do have satellite radio I can get. We can go home here. We'll pull over here to kind of mess with the center screen. Audio, we have weather, text messages, OnStar, navigation, projection. I also have a bunch of apps on here. I have a New York Times app. I believe this was installed by a previous owner. They downloaded it. New York Times, Fox Sports, iHeartRadio, uh, MyGMC. So we can actually project a device, which for 2020, I actually paid $4.99 to get a dedicated <laughs> USB cable so I can actually test out the projection in these cars. I always, I, I live my life one USB cord at a time and I manned up and I bought another one. So let's find out, let's see here, see if this is the right USB port. Once I plugged into the top USB port, I do have Apple CarPlay. So I'll show video here. I could actually finally show video of Apple CarPlay in a car. I can look at my text messages. You know, I can look at Google Maps. I can go to my Spotify, start going through my library. I love Apple CarPlay. I absolutely love it. It's the best. It's great. I've never tried Android Auto. I don't have an Android phone, so I, I can't really test out Android Auto for you. But I, I absolutely love it. Apple CarPlay makes everything so much easier. My texts are right here. My, my Google Maps is right here because a lot of vehicles have their own navigation system. And like in Mazda's case, Mazda's home navigation system is absolute trash. Google Maps is far superior in every single way. And so I can just get the Google Maps right up here and I don't have to you know keep my phone in my lap. You know, like for my RX-7, you know, um, if I want to use Google Maps, I'm like, you know, looking here and it's sliding off. And when I clutch in, it falls to the ground and blah, blah, blah. All of that stops with Apple CarPlay. Beautiful, beautiful. Mwah. Down below the radio, I do have my radio options for radio, media, back, home, skip track, menu, power, things like that. And then down below that, I do have my climate controls. I do have heated and cooled seats. Again, this is a very much a, a Cadillac feature rather than a Chevy feature. I almost feel like this truck is at the middle of a Venn diagram, but heated cooled seats in a pickup truck, very, very nice. And then I do have a bunch of interesting buttons. So I do have buttons to move the pedals back and forth. I talked about this in the Tahoe I just reviewed. Very nice feature. If you are shorter, on the shorter side of the spectrum, which no hate at all. You can move them closer so you don't have to sit so close to the airbag. You know, it's so dangerous. Then I do have my traction control off button. Then I have the bed rear dome light, parking sensors on and off, lane keep assist on and off, and hill descent control. Lane keep assist, again, is a very nice feature, something that you find in more luxury cars. This is a pickup truck. Then, 
I have all of the outlets you could ever want in the world. I have two 12 volt standard car outlets in the middle. On the left, I have two USB outlets. And then on the right, I have a standard American home outlet that you can plug literally a hair dryer into if you want to. I could plug my Mac desktop in if I really want. Like right here in the Sierra. I absolutely love that. Center console is very large. You can hold all of your things two cup holders, a little phone holder. It's a really nice space. You, it's it's a really nice space. It's really all I can say. Seats are nice and comfortable. I am pleasantly enjoying the heated seats right now. Like I said, memory. The passenger seat is also heated and cooled as well. I don't think I mentioned that. And so overall, really, really nice interior. We do have back seats, so we'll hop back there and then I'll show you a little bit of the bed. All right, so we're in the back of the 2018 GMC Sierra. Legroom is great. Headroom is great. Just the whole back seat is really, really great. It has a lot of room. This is my driving position. I, I have so much leg room back here. You know, trucks of yesteryear, the back seats, especially even the late 90s Chevy S10, the back seats were horrible. Actually, even modern day Tacomas aren't great. But this, a full size pickup truck, this is where you're really going to see that advancement besides towing capabilities, blah, blah, blah. Interior wise, this is where you're going to see a big difference. So much room back here. I do have a center console with two cup holders. I don't have that many amenities, but it's a truck. You don't need amenities back here. Rear sliding window, power windows. I have two grab handles here and here for when you're two trekking up in Michigan. You know, you can hold on. I do have lights here. They seem to be some form of LED, maybe. I don't know. Got some storage, got some seat back pockets. There's really nothing else you could really need from a back seat. The 2019 Ram Limited had reclining back seats and heated and cooled rear seats. That's nice. You don't need it. I wish the GMC had it. Doesn't. Oh, well. One nice feature of the back seats is you can fold them up. Look at how much storage room that is. There's no bins down here like the Ram, but you can actually fold these up and down and get a whole lot more storage room. And that one does go up as well. I'm just not gonna go over there and do it because I'm lazy. Now let's take a look at the bed real quick. So this is not GMC's split tailgate. This only opens up one way. Soft open though. Really, really nice. It won't slam. You got your tie downs. Um, I know truck people like seeing them. One there, one up there, one up there, one up there. These actual solid ones and then you have these for 250 pounds at the top of all four corners as well no tie down in the middle that's an interesting thing um, i didn't realize this but my friend theo told me that a, a middle toe strap is really nice for motorcycles this doesn't have that so it might be something to think about nice gmc nice uh bed liner in here and that's really it you do get a locking tailgate as well so let's talk about the looks this truck was not designed by our lord and savior wayne cherry this is after Wayne Cherry's time at GM. So I don't know who designed this, doesn't matter. They're not as cool. I don't think this is particularly the best generation of GMC trucks. I don't think it looks particularly the best. However, it doesn't look bad. I, I think it's still a good looking truck. It looks expensive. And I think that's the look GMC was trying to go for because this is a more expensive vehicle, but it looks expensive. It almost looks a little bit too expensive. I feel like off-roading this, you know, if it gets dented up by a tree, I feel like I'm going to want to sit and cry in a corner. Whereas, you know, I used to have a Dodge Ram pickup truck when I did hit a light pole with that truck, trying to impress a girl doing donuts. I didn't feel as bad. I, I mainly, mainly just my ego was hurt um, because she did not find me interesting um, because I did a donut into a pole. But I, I didn't feel bad. This, if I nicked it or scratched it or... I don't know. I, I feel bad because it's so nice because it, it, it feels so nice. And so that's the only gripe I really have with the looks is that it looks too rich for my blood, honestly. That being said, overall, I think this is a really good truck and it is really just an up spec Chevy Silverado. Like I keep saying, it's sort of this middle ground. It has these Cadillac features, you know, features that I normally see in a Cadillac, like the heated steering wheel, the whole look of the steering wheel, the center information screen and the gauge is very Cadillac, the heated seats, the cooled seats, very Cadillac, the little wood grain on the doors, very Cadillac. But then we also have things that are very Chevy Silverado, like the key, 
looks like any fleet vehicle key. It's a very base model meh key. It drives like a Silverado. Has a little bit harsher of a ride because it is a truck. And that's not a bad thing. I'm just saying if I close my eyes, I'm not going to do for too long. It feels like a Silverado. It feels like I'm still driving a Silverado. It has all of the base qualities of a Silverado. It has the trailer brake adjusters, four wheel drive, and essentially the same body, of, or at least a very similar body to the Silverado. And so I, I like this truck a lot. I want that to come through that I really like the Sierra. I think it's a great truck. I just, when I buy a truck, I don't know if I wanna buy something so expensive. I would feel so bad you know, putting a, a dirty 13B rotary engine in the back that's on a tire that's ratchet strapped down with an old seat belt. <laughs> and okay, that probably outed me as being a real ratchet kind of human being, but I would feel bad sort of doing that. I, I feel like this is too nice. I really feel like this is almost a chop top Escalade. And so if you have the money and you have the money to not care, get the GMC Sierra. A lot nicer than the Silverado. A lot nicer than the Silverado. But if you're looking to try to stretch your bank account to meet the GMC Sierra, I don't think I would do it. I'd be very wary of that. Because if you're just trying to make ends meet now, if something happens to it, it's not gonna be good. And that should really go for every car or vehicle. I forget who said it. I wanna say Jay-Z, but he doesn't seem like the type. But someone said, I'll find the quote and you know give them the right citations for the video, that you should never buy something unless you can buy it twice. And I really feel that way about this. I don't think you should buy this truck until you can buy it twice. Because then if something happens to it, as what happens to many trucks, you jackknife a trailer, your load falls over, whatever it may be, you're not going to be devastated if you're balling out of control. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Toyota of Naperville for letting me take out their used GMC Sierra. This truck is absolutely awesome. I really cannot thank them enough. And I'm glad I got to drive a modern GMC Sierra. I'll leave a link at the end of the video. I drove an older short cab, short bed, step side GMC Sierra. And uh, that was pretty cool. So I'm glad I got to drive the updated version. They've definitely gone more plush. Um, in the last 15 years since I last reviewed one. They've definitely gone more plush. But again, huge thank you to Toyota Naperville. Their information is up on the screen. If this truck is still available by the time this video comes out, I will leave a link to it down in the description below. But I don't know how long these will sit on the lot because trucks move fast. To quote the history hyenas, kid moves tickets. Kid moves tickets. All right, well, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really like to. Take care, guys.